Did you ever just wish you could have a second pair of eyes to look at something that you see on your screen? Well, that's this video. We are here to talk about remote desktop and remote assistance here in Windows 10. So this is going to be fun because we're actually going to do it and not just talk about it. So to get started, one of the first things we want to do is head over to the remote desktop area. And that's going to be inside of our right click on our start button. And we're going straight to settings. We're going boom, right there. We could have clicked start and typed in settings and found it that way. But we're doing right click on start and we're left clicking on settings. Now inside of settings, where we're going to head over to is system. And inside of system, this is where we're going to scroll to the bottom on the left side. And here we find remote desktop. I'm going to go ahead and click on remote desktop. And what we see here is that by default, remote desktop is turned off in Windows 10. Now with remote desktop being turned off, that means remote users can't access our system. Now, if we wanted to allow a remote user to connect to our computer across the network and gain access to our system and literally be us on the system, we can slide the slider to the right and it says, are you sure? You and users selected under user accounts will be able to connect to this machine remotely. And I'll go ahead and click confirm. Now, let me chat about this a little bit more. When you turn on remote desktop, someone can now remotely connect to your machine. And when they connect to it, they're going to authenticate utilizing your username and password combo. Well, what if I don't want to give out my username and password combo? Then a remote user would have to have their own username and password on your machine, which means you'd have to create a user account for them in your machine. So if you want five different users to be able to remotely access your box using their own username and password combo, they need five accounts. That's what that means. Otherwise, you're sharing your username and password for them to gain access. So this is remote desktop, and there's a couple settings we can modify here. For example, there's power settings, which we can go into, which is just show settings and talks about power and sleep. Um, we don't want our PC going to sleep and then not being able to remotely access it. Also, making our machine discoverable on our network so people can see it. We have settings here that we saw previously in our network settings, and this is where we found things before of network file sharing, as well as the idea of password protected sharing. So these are taken care of us by default. Now we're gonna scroll down here for remote desktop settings. And what we can see here is the name that people are gonna target when they use remote desktop as a tool on their computer is gonna be the PC name of student PC underscore one. That is the name of my computer that we are on right now that we just allowed people to connect to. Down below, user accounts. I was just talking about this. Select the users that can remotely access our computer. By default, the user that can access it is the student username with the password for the student account. Now, if you wanted to add other people to be able to access it, we would click add. And now inside of here, we'd be able to type in the different usernames or group of users that would be able to remotely access our machine. You would put those in here and we would then select OK. Now, continuing onwards at the bottom. Besides just user accounts that can have remote access, if you don't know how to even use remote desktop from a remote machine and use it as a tool, there's a lot of links here for help. And Windows does a great job for that. So what we want to give a try now is we want to try to remotely access this computer. <laughs> but I got to do something first. Um, in order to remotely access this, people are going to need a username and a password. And if I check my student account right here, uh, change account settings for the account on my machine, uh, what we'll be able to see is I don't have a password. So the student account, uh, sign in options, uh, my account does not have a password. So I'm going to add a password so we can actually remotely access this machine using remote desktop. The new password is going to be Cisco123 because that's awesome. And the hint is going to be, you know it. And with Cisco123 as the password, we're going to utilize that with the user account of student to remotely access this machine. So let's give it a try. I'll load up a different operating system. So here we are in Windows 7. I'm going to go ahead and click Start, and we're going to use Remote Desktop. And here it is, Remote Desktop Connection. And then what I'll do is I'll type in the computer name that I want to access, student PC underscore 1, and I will click Connect. Now, as I click Connect, it says, ooh, you want to connect? All right, you're going to use the user account of student, but what's the password for that account on the other machine? And that's Cisco123. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And what's going to happen here is my Windows 7 machine is going to remotely connect to the other machine of student PC1, and I will have complete and utter control of that machine using that user account. It says, do you want to verify? Yes, we're going to verify with a certificate, which is talking about certificate authentication and authority. And now the connection will go through. 
So here we are with remote access on the other machine at this time. We are remoted in. And let me change the view so you can see the top of my window. And at the top of my window, you can see here that on my Windows 7 machine, we are connected to student PC1. And with that being said, I can just, you know, minimize. <laughs> and I'm back in my Windows client machine for Windows 7. I can bring it back up and I'm back in the remote desktop connection for the student PC1. So I'm going to change my window again and we'll continue. So from the Windows 7 machine, I literally have taken over the Windows 10 box. And what's really important to note about this, if I go take a look at the Windows 10 system again, what does it look like? On the Windows 10 machine, um, it's logged off. When the remote user connected to our machine with a student account, our current account that we were using, which was the student account, got logged off. And if I log in on my side, on my account here on the Windows 10 box, Let's take a look at what happened to the remote session from the Windows 7 box. Take a look. Once the user on the Windows 10 computer itself logged back in on their side, we got disconnected with our remote session. I go ahead and click OK, and we're back here in Windows 7. So that's remote desktop. And now we have one more item to discuss, and that's going to be remote assistance. So we are back on our Windows 10 client, and now we're going to talk remote assistance. Now, first off, in order to go into the remote assistance settings, what we're going to do is go ahead and click on start and we're going to head over to PC and with PC, we're going to go over to our properties. Now, when we click on properties for this PC, it's going to open up a new window for us. And we want to go to is on the left side here and it's called the remote settings. We go inside of our remote settings link. What we'll see when I resize my window is that we have the remote assistance here, which is set for allow remote assistance connections to this computer. That's great. Awesome. So that means that people who we provide a special file to known as an invite can use that file and a password to then connect to us. This is different than remote desktop because remote desktop, we are literally turning on a service that anyone at any time can just on their own initiate a connection and take over our computer and use it just remotely, which is great. With remote desktop, people can initiate on their own. With remote assistance, we have to provide them a file and a password to access our machine. So how do we go about doing it? Well, it's really not difficult at all. Now that we have remote assistance connections being selected, um, I can go ahead and click on advanced here. And what we can take a look at is what are our actual settings for this? Yes, our computer can be controlled remotely. Also, how long can an invite we create and provide someone stay open? Well, the default here is six hours. So we're gonna leave it at the default of six hours. And what we wanna do now is create a remote assistance invite. To do that, I'll click on my start button and we're actually gonna type in remote assistance here. And when we type in remote assist, what we'll have is allow remote assistance invites to be sent from this computer. Okay, and then in the settings, invite someone to connect to your PC and help you. I'm gonna click on that. When I click on that, we get this remote assistance window. And here we can go ahead and help someone else who's invited us with a file, or we can use invite someone. So I'm going to click the top one. I want to invite someone else to remotely assist me. When I click on that, there's three options here. Two of them are grayed out. The top option is I can save the invitation as a file on my machine. Then I'll have to get that file to somebody else, either through an email attachment, flash drive, file sharing, you name it. The other options are grayed out because I cannot select them at this time. But if I had an email program installed on my machine, it could automatically email it to a remote target. Or with an Easy Connect app from the Windows Store, I'd be able to use that as well. I'm going to do the default option of save the invite as a file. When I click on that, it'll ask me where to put it. I'm just going to toss it on my desktop. And now my invite file is going to be saved to my desktop of my Windows 10 machine. The file saved to my machine. Also, I have a new window that pops up. It says, please make sure you give this password to the other user in order to access your machine along with that invite file. So we're gonna head over to the Windows 7 machine and we're gonna use this file and this password in order to remotely assist the Windows 10 box. So we are on the Windows 7 box. I've got that invite file moved over to the desktop. Um, what I can do is I can double click on that invite file. And it says, ah! What is the password to connect? Well, that password is going to be that big, beefy, long one we originally saw, which is M92W2MXD5M2X, which that's crazy, but it's good. It's good security. Go ahead and click OK. 
Um, from there, what we're going to see is back on Windows 10. Let me move back over again. Here we are. My Windows 10 box that says, would you allow a student to connect to your machine? And I'll say, yeah, go ahead. And they're like, hey, I didn't get logged off this time. Like remote desktop, we got logged off. But now it says your helper can now see your desktop. Well, that's cool. Like I can pause the ability for my helper to see. Ah, they can't see anymore. Or continue. Now my helper can see the desktop again. I can open a chat window where we can chat back and forth, me and my helper. Then even in the settings area here, we have some options that we can take a look at, like bandwidth usage, saving a log. You have info here that you can customize, which is great. Um, we're going to go back on the Windows 7 machine to see what they're viewing, and we'll continue. Okay, this is just cool. So from the Windows 7 machine, we have this remote assistance window that's open, and it says we're helping the account of student on the other machine. Um, what we can do is customize our size here, and just like we saw on the other machine, the Windows 10, we've got things like chat and also settings. Um, now, I can't click anything. This is not remote desktop. I don't have access to control. If I want to request control, I can go ahead and click request control. And it's going to pop up on the Windows 10 machine. Again, I can't click yet. And on the Windows 10 machine, it says, do you want to give this person control of your machine? Because right now, they can just view. And if I went to the Windows 10 client, I'd be able to then allow this Windows 7 user to remotely control my machine. So this is the difference between remote assistance and remote desktop. They both use an encrypted protocol across the network to allow this type of access and control. Thank you for viewing. Customize, practice, and play with your own remote desktops and remote Windows assistance settings.